Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you for keeping up with me, actually, and thank you for joining this series that I've created. Um, I'm excited to speak with you and just to get to know a bit more about yourself, your career, and kind of your story, should I say. Yeah. How, how are you, before we begin, how are you feeling? Good. Um, I've had a very productive day, which is good. That's good. How is, how's the family? How are your family? All good. All good. Good, um, good. now, which is a blessing. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good to hear. Okay, so I I know you've been speaking a lot about mental health, um, and I know for some people it can seem a bit overwhelming, um, particularly if you're kind of hearing your story over and over again. Um, but I just want to say you're inspiring millions of people. Um, it's so nice to hear, especially from a male perspective. It's so nice to hear men speaking about, you know, their mental health and what they've gone through. So thank you for that. Um, how, how does it feel, you know, sharing your story with different people? How does that feel? Uh, to be honest, now I've done it because I've done it. It really feels like I'm just telling a story. Okay. Um, so as personal to me anymore, which is a bit weird. Um, okay. Because it was, it was such a long time ago as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's. Um, I'm very comfortable with doing so, and I'm very used to doing so because I've done it so many times now. Okay, so it's kind of like an outside experience with you kind of looking into your old life and sharing that with people and inspiring many people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very much an opportunity to reflect on my former self in a way, my former mm -hmm. like lifetime and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's great to be able to be in this position now where I can look back. And, and kind of have a more well-rounded view on it. And it must feel very, um, it must feel like you've got a weight lifted off your shoulders and it must feel very empowering for you to look at the person you were to the person you are today and how you're inspiring millions of people in a different way because, you know, your fans would have known you from football and you would have had your football fans, but now you're kind of, you've got a new audience of people who generally care about you and your well-being. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's... I think that probably happened most when I first started speaking about it, where it felt like I was very much still in that, I guess, and in mm -hmm. terms of the fact that I hadn't spoken about it and it was still very, quite raw, quite fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and then speaking about it in the public domain for the first time really helped. And it was really empowering because it just felt like freedom. Mm. I could just go, you know, this is my story, this is me, I don't have to hide or anything or pretend I am something else or I feel like something else when this is the reality of it. Mm. And I, li I like how you said, um, I like how you used the word freedom because it yeah. for me that feels so nice and so <clears throat> so warming for you to use such a word, you know, because it's like when you were that person, you probably felt trapped. But then when you had your time to share your story, you know, you kind of blossomed and the real Marvin came out. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly how it is. You find yourself battling. It feels like daily you're battling yourself almost to to just allow yourself the room to breathe, really. And, you know, me, as well, being an in industry that I, I was in anyway in football, mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that is has been a, a very well-received conversation topic in the wider world really not just mm -hmm. within the football industry and the realms of a football club but in the wider world in terms of media fans etc so for me to have to kind of suppress that and how I felt and and you know everything that was going on in my life was difficult but you know mm -hmm. being able to get to the point where it was like I, I don't care if I can have a discussion I'm going to have a discussion and I'm just going to move forward it's like a weight just lifted off my shoulder Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I've, and I have researched your story and your story is very motivational even for me um, and I know you speak about well speak about your football but I first of all want to speak about your wife um, because I know you mentioned saying that um, if it wasn't for your wife you may have not been here today and I just you know want to say a big thank you to your wife um, because it takes a lot of courage even for her you know to be strong enough to help her partner um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to your wife if she's watching um, and just say thank you. Um, and it's people like her that 
we also need to empower and encourage as well because she did a, a great thing for you and you know for your family so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she she pushed me to go and see someone and as I'm around like no one else probably would have done so because how I was reflecting outwards was you know a lot of it was down to me saying I'm, I feel like this and I'm out, outwardly projecting this because of my, what's going on in my career. It was very, it's a very, very emotional and a very emotive career. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. People don't want to talk about it really a lot of the time, but it's very, it's, it's very emotive. And, and so when people share that in their personalities, and sure they go up and down, up and down, up and down. At mm -hmm. home, who, somebody who's kind of been on that journey with them, they'll probably look and say, oh, right, it's, you know, it's, that's just how it is. That's just how he's yeah. feeling. Because he's not playing or he's not playing well. Or he's not on form where he's just had a falling out with someone mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll be okay. Whereas my wife, who didn't have any idea about what football was like, the industry or anything, she didn't know about what football meant to me or to people. So she just said, well, you just don't seem right. So you need to go and see someone. Oh, wow. Oh wow, and that's very interesting. The fact that you said your your wife never knew much about your career, so it shows that she knew you as a person, and you know she was able to identify a change in your mental well being, and she could spot the signs and you know help you get help. So that that's very powerful, actually. That's very interesting. Yeah. To know. Yeah. Okay. And um, so, congratulations on the documentary that you did with Prince William. Um, what what was that like? Um, to be honest, at the time, I didn't really think too much of it. It was only really, I guess, reflecting on it and seeing, you know, I mean, at the time as well, there was a lot going on. Um, as well as that, there were, there were other things that were kind of, um, that I was working on personally with my production company, mm -hmm. um, planning, et cetera. So there was so much going on and everything was so fast paced at the time that I didn't really have time to kind of take a step back and say, well, like this is, you know, yeah. the, the magnitude is what I'm doing and, and how I'm able to use my voice to, and use my story essentially to have this conversation, to be able to, to really amplify this message to such a large audience. And obviously with someone going to be leading the country. So it was, it was very strange um, mm -hmm. to look back on really, because at yeah. the time I was a, didn't really think too much of it just having a, a conversation and mm -hmm. yeah it's just it's quite strange to look back on and think that yeah. you know, to, that I've sat down and had a, a very open and frank conversation with Mr. King mm -hmm. yeah well wow. well congratulations that's amazing um and I can kind of relate to that as well when when I interview you know such um pub great public figures I kind of I'm just so in tune in the conversation and I don't really think about I've interviewed this person and that person it's more just you know I'm just in tune of the conversation having great conversation and just getting to know someone on you know on a personal level and um, so I can definitely understand how you feel and how you possibly would have felt in that um, situation so let's talk about your career or well, your previous career should I say um so you were a footballer you played for Fulham and then you moved to Watford um, you retired, I think, at the age of 26, am I right? 26? 28. Oh, 28. Okay, 28. Um, so for those who don't know a bit about your story or why you retired, do you want to share why you retired? Um, I mean, it, it was largely down to mental health. Um, and the industry in itself was just for me it, i found it to be depressing um both physically and emotionally in terms of being myself and and actually having the room to have my personality the way it is it, it currently is and being very being, being able to be more than just a football player which I, I found quite frustrating for a very long time is that within the football industry people you know wh whether it's people within a club as I said outside of that mm -hmm. uh, yeah, people are, are not very receptive to football players with up interest outside of playing football which okay. you know is something that I found really frustrating for a very long time and 
I'm somebody w- with a lot of different interests and I'm somebody who wants to pursue them. I want to, I want to pursue everything that I'm interested in because mm-hmm. you know, life is just the once, yeah, have one crack at life. And so I'm not going to waste time being held back and not doing things that I want, that I enjoy or trying things that I, I think I may like. So that, that played a massive role throughout my my years and and just having the space to grow and and move into another industry where there's also longevity well as that that i'm very passionate about as well Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing um and you you know you said that football was very emotional um both mentally and physically and i feel that as fans and as people watching from the outside we only see the physical element of it um, you know, because obviously football, like you train, come on the pitch, you have to play your match, score your goals. And we don't necessarily think about the emotional side of things or the mental side of things. Um, and, you know, the mental preparation for you to even train and kind of get on um, the pitch. Um, so when you were struggling with your mental well-being during those times, did you have much support from your football team, should I say? As in my teammates or the club itself? I would say the club itself. So just the overall kind of the club and everything. At, 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 at my worst, no. Um, mm. Not at all, really. Uh, later down the line, I did. Um, it, it, it still wasn't great, but it, mm-hmm. it was, there was something there. But yeah, at, at earlier stages of my career, not so much, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that must be quite hard I'm thinking especially for the other players as well you know um, because if you are struggling there must be other players who are also you know having their own difficulties is that something that as team players you may have spoken about or is that something that you literally don't speak about I mean mental health is, is and that kind of thing is very common mm-hmm. within people that label it as such because they don't want to be perceived as weak or, or lesser yeah. than anybody. But it's, it's all of the traits are very much there and they're very common within within the industry. So, yeah. yeah, this is something that, and one of the reasons why I do what I do and I, I have these discussions off is because I need people to understand that within the realms of football, people yeah. need to have the ability to be themselves be open about what's going on they need to have the freedom to do so mm-hmm. it's kind of like um well for me i kind of feel like it's like um players are putting up a facade um it's one person on the pitch with one person off the pitch um and yeah. you know i'm happy that we have people like you who can actually speak about that and you know share your experience and kind of share what it's really like you know being on the pitch and being off the pitch um, I know you have spoken about racism and bullying. Um, do you want to share a bit more about that experience? Yes, as we've very much seen over the last, particularly the last year, yes. racism is still very much alive and kicking within the world. You know, not just football; it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's just very present. People know that and, and whatever as much as they want, but it's, you know, it's, it's very evident that it's there. Mm-hmm. In terms of bullying, within football, it's, it's such a, it, it's not even, a, I, I want to say it's a fine line, but it's not a fine line really, because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's very obvious, but where people see it in football is that it's a fine line between banter and bullying, or okay. mm-hmm. between being tough and, and, and having tough love, as opposed to, as opposed to it being bullying, and for me, it's very clear. Very clear, but again, now I'm on the outside. It's it's very different. It's very easy for me to say. Whereas you talk about these things within the realm, of, and you're still within the game, it will affect you. You know whether it's somebody, whether it's a, another player, coach, a manager, could be perceived as a weakness, or that coach will then take that quite personally, and that that will have an effect on your career because coaches and managers know each other. They move around the same way players move around, so. Mm-hmm. It, it, a lot of the times you get told by older players when you're first coming through uh, just keep your head down um, kind of don't attract too much attention to yourself to, to, mm-hmm. to, to 
make yourself a target for anybody. Their, mm -hmm. their family, media, other players, coaches, managers. You keep your head down to, to make sure that you're not a target because bullying is, is that rife that mm -hmm. people teach you how to kind of avoid it and how to be how to avoid being in the in the firing line essentially. But mm -hmm. we can't discuss things really within football, as I said. A because it will affect your career, but B that there isn't anyone to discuss it with. Mm. Because there is no HR in football. It doesn't exist. Oh wow. With players anyway. And it is perceived as, as you being someone who complains or moans or whinges or you know, and that's that isn't helpful. That's not helpful to your career because people just look at you like you're weak. Mm. And that's very sad to hear, you know, the fact that there's no, like you said, there's no HR for the football players. So, you know, if you are feeling a certain way, there's no one that you can actually go and speak to about how you're feeling. And it seems like, obviously, it's understandable that, you know, football, you look at the physical side, like, you know, you've got to train and get out of there, do the match. But then what about the emotional side? Even, you know, when you lose a game, you know, who can you speak to about how you're feeling because of that loss? Um, and just various different topics in relation to football um, and, you know, how it can affect you mentally. Um, do, you, do you miss football? I know you've, I know you've grown and you're doing great things. Um, do, you miss do you miss playing football? Well, I don't, I don't have to miss playing football because I still play with friends okay. quite, quite regularly. So I don't have to play football and I don't. I don't miss the industry whatsoever. I don't miss being okay. a and being shouted at and, and mm. disrespected and treated like I'm lesser than a human being and that I'm just an object. You know, mm. I, I can I very much hold strong values in many different areas and I like to be treated with with respect, which isn't something that is very common in mm. football. So mm. Being outside of it is is ideal for me. Yeah, perfect. I, I love I love that. I love the fact that you still play football, and I love the fact that you've kind of grown as a man, and you know you know what you want, and yeah. you will get what you want. Um, and it for me it shows that you don't have to stay within an industry just because you love the sport or love playing or love doing whatever it is that you're doing for that career. You can come out and inspire people in many other ways and still do what you love to do. Um, you mentioned about you know being spoken to um, and being treated less you know in quite um, derogatory ways. Um, without giving too much detail, but how are footballers treated in the sense of so before you go on a match, how are you treated? Are you kind of shouted at? Or are you kind of? Um, yeah, I mean it's not yeah. just during or before matches. I mean essentially if you. It's very much like being in school. Oh wow! And managers and coaches are almost like teachers, and and players are like kids. Yes. You get mm. treated like kids, and you get told where to be, what to do, how to do it. But with a child, you'll you'll say, you know, you shouldn't do that. Whereas as a football player, you'll get sworn at, you'll get shouted yeah. at, mm. you'll get things thrown at you. <laughs> um, and that's that's just the normal. That's normal, yeah. very much normal within football. Oh wow! So it's kind of like the it's kind of like the culture then is just you know quite unhealthy to kind of even be in. Um, did you get much as a football player? Do you get much freedom in the sense of what you want to do and kind of where you want to play on the football field, or is it kind of like very dominated? Sometimes, but. More often than not, it's it's down to the manager. Because you might say, right, I'm a striker, and I only want to play striker. And he might say, well, I want you to play in midfield on the left. Okay. And if you say, well, I don't want to play on the left, he said, well, you're not going to play then. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's that, either, either this or nothing. Yeah, so that's that's mm -hmm. that's how it sometimes. So again, you have to just do you can do do what you need to do to survive. Whereas mm -hmm. keep your head down and pretty much say yes a lot of the time so to, to mm. what told. oh wow so it kind of well <laughs> this might sound like a cliche but it's kind of like goal orientated um in the sense where the aim is to score goals make money 
and kind of that's it. Um, so I'm very interested because I don't know much about football. Um, so, you know, like after a game when you're home, do you get any support when you're at home or is it just kind of like you play football and then you just go home and that's it? Or yeah, is there much support around it? Oh, okay. That's it. You, you play a game. If you lose, you probably get shouted at. Sometimes yeah. you get shouted at or you get praised or whatever it may be. Mm. And you go home and then you come back to training whenever whenever that is. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Um, because obviously I do, what I have watched football. Um, and, you know, when you watch football, you kind of see the entertainment side of it, the happy side when you're scoring goals and, you know, the footballers either dancing or laughing or smiling. Um, and it really creates a happy place. But then speaking with you, it shows that, you know, there's not much of a healthy balance on the actual internal side of things when it comes to football and the players. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a very complex industry. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it will get better. And I hope that with you speaking out and sharing your story, we'll get other footballers wanting to speak out and share their story because I think it just takes that one person. Um, yeah. It takes that one person to speak and then many others will kind of follow and create that domino effect. Um, okay, so thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, very interesting. Um, so let's talk about self-care. Um, so I know you do many different things now. Um, how do you take care of your self-care? Cool. I do. I, I'm not the best at that. I'm not the best probably even person to answer that question because I work a lot. Okay. And normally I I just work, 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 work. Keep my mind very busy, very occupied. Mm -hmm. And then work until the point of crashing. <laughs> and then I I um take it easy watch movie i mean i love watching film and tv mm -hmm. series and stuff anyway mm -hmm. reading every now and again i like to really stimulate my mind by having a lot of really thought-provoking um and interesting conversations um whether that's with friends whether that's with new people whoever mm -hmm. it may be i like that's one thing that i'm really keen to do i think that's probably i'd say that's the biggest thing for in terms of self-care for me because mm -hmm. it is mind never ever stops it's just always just going mm. at a, a very fast pace mm -hmm. so the best way for me to kind of look at everything and look at the world and understand everything that's going on and myself is just have really interesting conversations about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely and I, I like that as well i do feel like we can learn so much from other people um, and just really understand the world from different perspectives, from speaking to other people. Um, I know you struggled um, with your depression, um, and I know you you, said, you mentioned that your wife did support you in going to see a doctor. Um, without going into too much detail, what was that like for you, speaking to someone about how you were feeling? Uh, it was really weird because I didn't think I needed to speak to time. And then I went and had a conversation. I, I think the first session I broke down crying because, mm. and I, I couldn't understand why. Because, you know, on, this, on paper, looking at my life at the time, it was as good as it was ever going to get. Mm. And it was just really hard to understand all the emotions that kind of came with along with that at that time. But it was a first step on, on a very long journey of understanding mental health understanding where I was at personally but you know to to take that first step is the hardest by far mm -hmm. so once you start once you take that first step and you know you can start walking and, and then you're off oh that's that's nice to hear and it's very and that's very true you know taking that first step in in anything is very hard and you know it's like baby steps but once you take that step and you continue, you know, you kind of see that growth and see that change within yourself. So that's nice to hear. Um, okay, so how, before we go, how has COVID been for you with the lockdown? How have you been? Poor, oh, it's been tough. I got um, two kids, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Oh, so oh, they're young. Yeah, the first three months was very, very tough. Mm -hmm. we went back to nursery in June. 
and that's when it, it did get a lot easier when they went back that's why mm. uh, it's been tough for for many reasons which you know for a lot of people is you know understanding what's going to happen mm. to three days working you know working in film uh it's the industry's been completely decimated mm-hmm. and basically i'm i'm freelancer <laughs> so <laughs> when it's not when it's no work and you can't actually film there's yeah. no money so it's it it's a worry and you you wonder when is when is this going to change and at yeah. the same time still trying to make progress have conversations and and keep things moving forward but you you don't know you're kind of like going down a, a blind alleyway mm. when you know when you know or even like a dark time you don't know when at some point you're going to see light but you don't know when yeah. it's going to be but keep going and keep going and keep going so it's been up and down on the whole, it's been a great learning curve. And to be honest, it made an enormous amount of progress in that time without even probably, you know, thinking about it. I've just, even when it was tough, I just thought right, even one step forward today is better than no steps forward. Just always keep moving forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. And that's nice to hear because I've done many interviews and a lot of people have said it's been tough but they've kind of grown and they've kind of taken one step at a time. Um, and I think that's great, great tips and great advice from yourself. Um, you know, just taking one step at a time because essentially we're in this, we're all in this together um, and we're all walking blindly, you know, we're all walking down that blind alley. Nobody knows what the government are going to say tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it's just taking one step at a time and, taking it for what it is really um yeah so thank you for sharing that um and thank you for today's interview um it's been a pleasure to speak with you um and to also learn a bit more about the football industry um because that's very interesting um to even know um continue sharing your story continue being a great ins- inspirational person and i wish you all the best for the future thanks i appreciate that no worries see you later take care Bye. Bye. Bye.